Good morning, Transformers. I want to thank God for today, for this is the day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. This is that day, the 14th of August. I thank God for I, let me tell you friends, today we start our Sunday school week all the way to the 20th. It is the Sunday school week. And guess what? Our theme is loving the Lord my God. And being a Sunday school week, you are listening to me, you are a parent, you have a niece out there, you have a nephew, you may tell me I'm not yet a parent, or my children are out of the nest. As we continue throughout this week, I'll show you whatever age you are, you're not too young, you're not too old to parent and teach children on how to love the Lord our God, because that is what we are doing throughout this week. And I would like to read um, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 and 5. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 5. What does it say? Now, as I read, I would like to just to remind you that in the book of Deuteronomy, it is the book of re reputation. It was a reputation of the law. And Moses is reminding them of the things he has taught in the past. And here he's here. He's telling them, hey guys, here, all children of Israel, even as it is starting, that here, all children of Israel. He's reminding them, I had told you earlier, I had told you in chapter four, I've told you in the book of Exodus, I have told you in the past, but I'm reminding you once again. Remember the address, if you read carefully, I would love my brothers and my sisters, you go and read the book of Deuteronomy, the main, main focus. And I put a disclaimer in this, even as they are being taught the law, the main focus, and they, he kept on repeating, it was teaching the children. And he kept on repeating it again and again. So in chapter 6, he's telling them, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commands that I give you today are to be in your heart. He's telling them, hey, children of Israel, hear all children of Israel. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your, uh, your soul and with your strength. And then he says in verse 6, these things, he repeats the first one, that you shall love. You shall put this in your heart. It should be, in, it's like inscribe them in your hearts. Write them in your hearts. And let me tell you, as you continue in these verses, if you went to verse 7, verse 8, he's saying, after loving the Lord your God, you shall teach your children. And remember, this is our week. And we want to make sure that our children, by the time they are finishing, uh, with, the, with, 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 the, with the primary. As they go to the JSS, the junior secondary school, uh -uh, they'll go to that school knowing that they love the Lord our God. Parents, I hope you hear me. You are an auntie who is listening to me. You are an uncle who is listening to me. Remember Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way they should go. And when they grow up, they will never depart. And as we are teaching them, we are teaching them on how and our main focus, once again, is teaching our children how to love the Lord our God. And guess what? Somebody in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 37, somebody asked Jesus, those guys who are just asking Jesus questions, either just to provoke him or whatever they wanted, and they asked a question, who is the greatest among them? with the greatest command or the greatest thing. And Jesus said, verse 37, this is Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Jesus said unto him, remember at the end of the day, I guess, Jesus knew he was asking with certain, huh? with, 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 uh, he just wanted just to ask, do you have listen to? And then Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. This, verse 38, this is the greatest commandment. Then, and I love, but I love in the book of Mark, chapter 12, 
verse 29. The first of the commandments is here. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. Let me tell you, let me tell you in the book of Deuteronomy, in chapter 6, Moses just talked about you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. But when this guy asked, which is the greatest commandment, Jesus added something. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with your soul, with your mind, and your strength. So Jesus came in. Remember, there are certain verses in the Bible, and I believe this week you be the Bereans who go back when you hear the word of God, you both go back to the Bible and inquire more and search more. There are certain verses that are in the Old Testament around in the New Testament. And we see that in the, the what is written in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6. Once again, it is in the book of Matthew 22, verse 37, and now Mark chapter 12, verse 29 and verse 30. So in, verse, in Mark Chapter, chapter 12, Jesus has put four things. The, the book of Deuteronomy had only three. Why? The Jewish culture, the soul, and the mind, they were put together. But in the New Testament, Jesus said the soul and the mind. It is like he's putting a disclaimer saying, hey, the soul and the mind are two different things. And we also see it in the book of Romans, where Paul said uh, that we should... Uh, work out our minds and our souls that we should pray that the Lord will help us whatever we do with our minds whatever we do whatever surrounds us so in I would like us to look at some of the things that we need to learn that we understand what love is from a biblical perspective what was what was it all about what is it all about about this love remember when we talk about love they are in four stages there is the uh, the phileo that is just for loving uh, we love us as friends and all that there is the one for church the one for family there is the eros that is for the husband and wife now in this week we are talking about the agape love the love of god and remember in John chapter 14, there's a, there's a verse that says that you love God as you love him, then you are bound in him. And when you are binding in him, you are binding in this love. And when you are binding in this love, it means that you are abiding in God. They work together. They go hand in hand. Therefore, we are saying we have the steadfast love. That love that is firm, it is immovable. God's love is immovable. It doesn't matter what happens around you. It doesn't matter what happens. His love is firm. It is for keeps. It is forever. It is the perfect love. God's love, number two, God's love is uh, the perfect love. Number three, the covenant love. What happens when he loves you? There are things that happen around you when God's love is working in you. Then we have the authentic love, the true love of God, the unconditional love that is forever. Imagine, the Israelites were promised that he was going to take them through. Then even when there was no food, he supplied. When there was no water, he gave them. Why? He, there was the unconditional love. At times they would even worship the idols. There are times they would, do things, they would do things which were very wrong. But at the end of the day, he had promised that unconditional love. Therefore, friends, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, this is the kind of love we need to teach our children. By the time they're finishing primary, I said that earlier, by the time they're finishing primary and they're going to JSS, that is grade seven. They go to, eight. right now it's only one class, that grade seven. And even those who are listening from afar and you don't have this system over the CBC system, let me tell you, by the time they are becoming preteens, that is age 11, age 12, just before teenage. We want to make sure that they will love the Lord their God with all their soul, with their mind, with their strength, with their mind and all their strength. There is no one time as they go to high school, now the typical high school, 
Watch what Ajay says. As they are going to high school, our children will not change. They will love their Lord, their God. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, it says, Dear friends, let us love our one another, for love comes from God. We, we have to teach children that love comes from God. And everyone who knows who loves has been born of God and knows God. We teach our children that they get to a point, I know God, I love God. That they are not going to move out from that love. They are not going to leave that faith. They are keeping their faith and faith will keep them. Verse 8, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Then 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, Behold, what manner of love, what manner of love that God has loved our children, that they can leave high school and go to the university and go to work still loving God. What manner of love is this? Now, and we need to teach our children. It is not because they, they, they are so much educated. It is not because they pass so well in school. They have to depend on the Holy Spirit. It is not because of anything that they have done. It is not because of, of their status. It is not because of where they live, but it is they have to depend on the Holy Spirit. It is not by might, it is not by power, but by the strength of the Lord, by, by the Holy Spirit. Everything is all by the Holy Spirit. So friends, let's understand now, what does it really mean to love God and love, we need to understand the biblical way of loving God. Number one is that one of saying that we depend on only on God. Loving God with our soul. What does it mean, loving God with our heart and loving God with our soul? God's word also tells us to love our heavenly father with our whole soul. Remember the Hebrew word for soul gives the idea of the breath of life. The Greek word gives us a more global idea of the inner soul, self, the individual, the mind is a sense of the deep thoughts, the person, the person you are, that is the soul, who, you, who are you? As a child, we need to teach our children that as they move from one, remember the developmental stages of the life of a child. They need to know that as I move from this level to another, I have to know that I'll continue loving God with my soul, loving God. And then with the mind, God's people must also love him with their whole minds. The biblical meaning of the mind is the intellect, how they ought to love God. And then loving God with our strength. You know, the strength, whatever we do, wherever we go, wherever we are, we know that we love our God. Now, at the end of the day, friends, we need to teach our children that there are certain things to need, they need to do as they continue loving God. How are they loving God? Number one, as they are practical things. Number one, they need to read the Bible. They need to pray. How will they, as we read in Deuteronomy chapter 6, they were told as they go out there, the word of the Lord is written on their doorposts. Wherever they are, friends, we need to teach the, the Bible. How do we teach the children the Bible? Having devotions with them. That parents, you're not out there. You just go and hide yourself in a corner and you're reading the Bible and you're telling the children, hey, don't disturb me. Don't you know I'm reading the Bible? And or even you may ask me, Pastor, how do I teach the children to read the Bible? Let me tell you, there are devotion books out there. If you come to the office or wherever, if you find me, I would give you a devotion book. I'll guide you. I'll tell you, even in the internet, you, there are many ways that you can teach the, the Bible. You can teach the children the Bible. The other one is to pray. You'll ask me, because you want to love God. If you are going to love God, it is we are going to converse with God. We are, con we are talking to God. We are having the God's corner, what you call God's corner. We go to a corner. We are reading the Bible. We are praying, a time of prayer. 
We read the Bible together. We read the Bible. We pray together as parents. And at, at times you wonder, how do I teach my child how to pray? There are five ways you can teach your child to pray, and they will not forget how to pray. Now, these five fingers, they are so symbolic. We have this finger, the thumb. The thumb will always remind us that we pray for those who are close to us. And who are they that are close to us? Our brother, first our parents or our guardians, and then our brothers, our sisters, our family members, those who are so close to us. We pray for them. We pray for mommy as he goes, she goes to work. We pray for daddy as he goes to work, or even in his, their businesses. We pray for them for their health, and even that they may go far. Then we pray for those who lead us. This is the finger that points the way. So this finger is to remind me that we tell the children, this one is to pray for those who point the way, our teachers, those who direct us, those who show us the way, this finger. Then this finger, finger is for those who are in authority, the president, the who, and all that. Then this finger is the weak finger. This finger is to remind the children that we always pray for those who are sick, the orphans, the children who are out there in the streets. And then this finger will always remind children that pray for myself. I need to pray for myself. So this one is for those who are close to me. This finger will always remind me to pray for those who point their way for me. And this is to pray for the government. This one for the, those who are in authority, the government. Those who are weak, the weak finger. And this one, I pray for my, do I want a bike? I will always go back and pray for myself. I want, a, I want to do what? I want to perform well in school. I don't have to keep on saying, I, I don't know how to pray. The five fingers will always remind us. So tomorrow, we are going to see some of the other ways that we, we ought to do for us to know how to love the Lord our God. So tomorrow, we meet once again as we learn how to love the Lord our God. Remember, we have four things. To love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with our soul, with our mind, and our strength. According, it started in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, 5, and 6. So God bless you. God bless you. See you tomorrow, and God bless you.